Hey guys, it's Leah B from Prestige Veteran Medical Consulting. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, physician assistant, and former CMP examiner. So today I want to come on and discuss what happens in a CMP exam, compensation and pension exam, for neck pain or cervical spine conditions. So we've done several of these videos in the past, and they seem to be helpful. It's not; a, It should not be a big surprise what what is going to be discussed when you go to these exams, because it's a pretty straightforward process, but it can be very confusing. And I understand that. So that's why I'm hoping that some of these videos can be helpful to you guys. So I want to just throw out there that I'm not an accredited claims agent or a legal representative. I am just a, a former um, CMP examiner. So I can kind of sh shine some light on what that looked like from my side and give you guys some of that, uh, of what um, we would go over in those exams. Okay. So the first thing that's going to happen is you should get a packet in the mail that shows, um, you know, where your appointment's going to be, who it's going to be with, what time it is at. Um, it should have should have a DBQ enclosed in it, a disability benefit questionnaire, so you know what what to expect. It may or may not, um, but that ex exam location, the time, and who it's with, it should tell you. Like if it was with me, it would say, "Hey, it's with uh, physician assistant Leah Buckles at this location at this time." It may tell you what my specialty is, how long I've been doing these types of exams, and things like that. Okay, so you're going to show up to that exam. And basically, once you go into your examination, the examiner should be going over the disability benefit questionnaire with you, which I'm going to um, show you guys a copy of here in a minute. So you can go on VA.gov and look at these. Um, in fact, the one that I'm about to show you is from VA.gov. So you should be able to look at what, what that examiner is going to go down and, and all of the things they're going to document so that the rater, when they receive that, they can look and see what is this aligned with when it comes to the ratings, okay? If they decide it's related to your service, of course, okay? And, and whether there's a, there may be a medical opinion requested as well. Okay, so let me um, turn on the pr presentation mode and share this image with you guys, okay? All right, so here is that DBQ. Let me see if I can make it a little larger for you guys. Okay, so here is the cervical spine DBQ disability benefit questionnaire from VA.gov. Okay, so um, this is what your examiner is going to be filling out whenever you go to that exam. So your name, um, your the date of the exam, all of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is more so uh, this first page is more so about that examiner, um, you know, are they a VA healthcare provider? Is this person regularly seen in your clinic? Again, you can also print this out and take this to your treating healthcare provider and ask them to fill one of these out for you as well. Um, what, re what evidence was reviewed, okay? Your claims file or whatever treatment records um, are available, okay? It's going to ask, what is the dominant hand of the veteran? So are you left-handed or right-handed or are you ambidextrous, right? What is the what is the diagnosis that you have? You might have several. You might have no diagnosis, right? Um, list the claimed conditions that pertain to this questionnaire. So, what is your condition? Okay. Um, so it could be select diagnosis associated with the claimed conditions. Check all that apply. So, veteran does not have a current diagnosis associated with any claimed conditions listed above. So, you may have claimed that you have. Um, your claimed condition may be, you know, that you have spinal cancer, but you actually don't have spinal cancer. So then the answer would be the veteran does not have a current diagnosis associated with any of the claimed conditions, right? So you claimed that you have, you know, a missing arm, let's say that wouldn't be a neck condition, but if that it doesn't drive with what is actually going on, then the answer would be, you don't have that right? So that this is for what your claimed condition is, okay? So the veteran doesn't have this, or if you just put, you know, degenerative arthritis of the neck, right? Then the person can either say, they can confirm or say, you don't have that, or they say, oh yeah, this person has degenerative arthritis. They also have a spinal fusion. They have um, spondylolisthesis. They have verte vertebral fracture. You know, whichever of these apply, they're going to check, right? They're going to put a little check block, and then they're going to put the ICD code, which you don't, I mean, it's not super important for you to know, but it's, uh, this is a code, a diagnostic code. And then the date of diagnosis, it could be that they're diagnosing you that day in the clinic, 
on your CMP exam with a cervical strain. It could be based on some surgical notes that you have in your files or whatever. Okay. Um, if there's any, you know, there's an other block in case you have other conditions. If there are any other diagnoses pertaining to the cervical spine, lists using the above format. So I guess more other stuff. Um, so now here, describe the history, including the onset. So like you're going to tell, they're going to ask you about the history of the condition, what happened. You're going to explain to them, hey, I hurt my neck in service, X, Y, or Z, or this is how I injured my neck, right? Um, they're going to ask you about flare-ups of the cervical spine. Like, do you, do you have flare-ups where it's worse at some times, right? And then they're going to document the description of the flare-ups you have. Yeah, like, hey, I have flare-ups whenever I am at work. Or, you know, I do a construction job and it, it's worse at the end of the day. Um, hey, it gets better when I'm off work for several weeks at a time or whatever, Okay. Um, do you have functional loss or functional impairment of the joint or extremity being evaluated on the questionnaire, um, including but not limited to after repeated use over time? Okay, so are you having functional loss or functional impairment after repeated use over time? Okay, so then there's going to be range of motion. So we have a really great video on range of motion. You might want to check that out where we show you the goniometer and how that's used to measure flexion, extension. Um, and different types of rotations, right? So this is where the examiner is going to start um, doing your initial range of motion measurements. Let's see. They're going to do active and passive range of motion, meaning they're going to have you move and then they're going to help you move, right? Um, forward flexion, extension, I don't want to bog this conversation down with explaining what flexion and extension are, the differences. Right lateral flexion, left lateral um, rotation. These are all different types of um, movements. Again, you can watch my range of motion measurement thing uh, video so you can kind of catch up on that one. Um, but this is a pretty long BBQ, so I don't want to go over all the different types of measurements in this, okay? So we get through all of these range of motions, and those are, by the way, what help the rater decide what, what category you fall into if you are, in fact, service-connected for it. This is how they help determine your um, rating, right? Is dependent on, a lot of it is dependent on your range of motion, okay? Um, is there evidence of pain, right? Do you have pain in motion? Is it just on weight-bearing? Is it on non-weight-bearing, active motion, passive motion, just at rest, Okay. Is there crepitus? Is there tenderness or pain or palpation on the soft tissue? Okay. So again, more range of motion measurements. They're supposed to do it at least three times. So here they're talking about, are you being examined after repeated use over time? Yes or no. Do you have fatigue ability, weakness, lack of endurance, or incoordination, which significantly limits functional ability with repeated use over time? Um, and if so, is it due to pain, fatigue ability, weakness, lack of endurance, incoordination, or other? Okay, so now they're going to ask about flare-ups. Are you are you being examined during a flare-up? And if you're not, then the, the examiner is supposed to estimate um, if you were to be having a flare-up, what would your range of motion be during a flare-up? right? Based on your lay statements. Okay. Do you have guarding or, um, and muscle spasms of the cervical spine? In addition to those additional factors contributing to disability, okay? In addition to those addressed above, are there additional contributing factors to, of disability? Please select all and apply. Uh, Please select all that apply and describe. So do you have swelling? Um, do you have deformity, atrophy of disuse, weakened movements, disturbance of locomotion, et cetera? Strength testing. Okay, so they're going to get into the strength testing of your elbow and your wrist and your fingers. A lot of this is going to start going into like how the nerves are being affected that are coming out of your neck. Okay. Um, because if you have a severe pathology in your neck, it could be impairing the nerves that are feeding and distributing to these areas and it can affect your strength. Okay. And you can have muscle atrophy, right? Um, 
your reflexes can be um, impacted if you're having nerve dysfunction as well, right? So this is where we get into that radiculopathy. Okay, so radiculopathy, and we have a video on radiculopathy separately. If you're, if you have a level of your spine where you have some nerve involvement, where you, maybe you have a disc bulging on your nerve or something like of that nature, and that nerve is feeding into your whatever extremity it, it feeds, right? You can be having pain in your extremities, right? So are you having um, if you're, if you're experiencing radiculopathy, right, if you're not experiencing radiculopathy, then the answer is no. And then they don't have to fill out this section. If you are experiencing radiculopathy and you're having symptoms of radiating pain or sensory changes in the arms or uh, the legs, etc., and you answer that, yes, they're supposed to fill out this section and they're supposed to fill out, um, the neck really feeds the upper extremities. So that's why it talks about the right upper, the, the low back really feeds the lower extremities, right? Does the veteran have any other signs or symptoms of radiculopathy? Yes or no, please describe. Um, then the doctor is asked to discuss or the nurse practitioner or PA, whoever is asked to discuss which nerve roots um, are involved. Again, this is really a more advanced medical um the thing here because there's something called a dermatome. And if you look at my radiculopathy video, it'll show this where it's just like a map that says this nerve root from this level of your spine affects this part of your body. Okay. I don't want to bog that down too much. Um, ankylosis. Um, this is a condition in which the entire cervical spine or the thoracolumbar spine or the entire spine is fixed in flexion or extension. So if this applies to you, yes or no, they will fill that portion out. If it doesn't, they, they're not going to fill that out, right? Um, other neurologic abnormalities are going to be filled out here. Intervertebral distance syndrome and episodes requiring bed rest, they will fill this out um, as well. Okay. So if you do have IVDS that required bed rest, they're supposed to put yes or no. If you do, then they're supposed to describe that in more detail. Most of these are probably not going to apply to you guys. This is a really lengthy DBQ and there's probably only certain segments that are going to apply to you, but this is supposed to cover a ton of different conditions. So maybe for one veteran, only two or three pages of this is going to apply to them. Maybe for another veteran, two or three pages, a different two or three pages is going to apply to them, right? Um, it's unlikely that all 13 pages are going to apply to one person, but it's possible, right? Um, okay. So, and again, with this bed rest thing, then they're asking them to talk about the facility and the provider, where is it documented, right? So it's not just necessarily off you saying, Hey, I had to have bed rests, etc. Um, prescribed bed rest. So assistive devices, do you use any assistive devices like a cane or crutches or a walker or wheelchair or brace, etc.? Um, Remaining effect function of the extremity. So this is a really good question. So this a lot of times comes into that special monthly compensation stuff that, that discusses um, some of those ones that talk about loss of use of your extremities. So this question basically asks if you would be better off with an amputation. I don't know if you would be better off with an amputation of your neck. I'm not really sure how that would work out very well, but this is a question. Um, it, Due to the veteran's cervical spine condition, is there a functional impairment of, the of an extremity? Okay, so maybe this has to do with radiculopathy or that nerve impairment, not the neck itself. Um, that no effective function remains other than which would be equally well served by an amputation with prosthesis. Functions of the upper extremity include grasping, manipulation, etc., while functions of the lower extremity include balance and propul um, propulsion, etc. Okay. Other pertinent physical findings, scars. So there's always a question about scars. Like if you had a, uh, you know, a fusion of your neck or something and you've got a scar related to that, that could be another DBQ that gets opened up and they go over the scar, right? We have a video on scars. You can check that one out as well. Diagnostic testing. We're Hang in here with me, folks. We're, we're rounding the, the curve on this one. Diagnostic testing. Um, this is asking about MRIs, CT scans, x-rays, et cetera, that you've had done, EMGs, things like that. Um, so that's, you know, where, when, why, all those things. Okay. 
Do you have um, a vertebro fracture with loss of 50% or more of height? So a lot of these things go into different rating codes, okay? Functional impact. So regardless of the veteran's current employment st status, do the conditions listed in the diagnosis section impact his or her ability to perform any type of occupational task, such as standing, walking, lifting, et cetera? Um, and then any additional remarks, then they're supposed to sign it, put their information, and um, that's about it. Okay, so let me jump off of this screen share here. Okay, so they also might be asked to provide a medical opinion, which is another type of DBQ, a medical opinion DBQ, as to whether they believe it is related to your service, um, and then give a medical opinion, yes or no. Um, I hope this was helpful, and please drop some comments and let me know if you guys have any questions about it. I know that was a that was a long DBQ. It is a tough one to do. Um, personally, it's it's just a long one. I, I know doing this one in the lumbar spine DBQ as the examiner is always a is a long one to do, but. They should always be using a goniometer to measure your joints. Um, and if they're not, that's kind of a problem. I think a lot of the exam companies actually have you sign an attestation stating that you that there was one used too. So that's really great. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.